In this video, we're talking about the pros and cons of buying the Lenovo Legion Tower 7i versus the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i laptop. Now, the pros and cons right off the bat, in my opinion, are cost efficiency. Now, when it comes to the Legion Tower for the i9-13900KF, as well as the RTX 4080 inside of a build with 32 gigs of RAM, right? It's a great PC build, has plenty of performance. And we're gonna show you the performance benchmarks here in just a few minutes. But when you think about the fact when you're gonna have to buy a keyboard, you're going to have to buy a mouse you're going to have to buy a monitor the cost can add up rather quickly and so when you think about the cost efficiency a laptop is really the way to go so for the rtx 4080 version of the lenovo legion pro 7i it's about the same price give or take the price when you see this video if you're curious about the exact live pricing of these two products i'll put links in the description below if you want to make a purchase i'll get a small commission but at no extra cost to you but of course that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way so when it comes to purchasing a laptop you get everything Thing you need. You get the keyboard, the trackpad, and the screen all included. Now you can add extra peripherals, of course. You can buy an external mouse, which then provides you a little bit more flexibility with the cursor on screen. You could buy an external keyboard if you want. And you could even buy an external monitor, which would provide you more real estate to work on your projects. But the benefit is you don't have to buy those right off the bat. You can start with the laptop and then go from there. Whereas with the PC build, you have to buy the build and you have to buy all the extra things. Now think about it, if you buy a mouse, a keyboard, and a monitor, you're now adding anywhere from probably 400 to 800 to maybe even $2,000, depending on the quality of screen you purchase. I'll put a few options in the description below if you wanna check out some ones that I recommend, but you could go anywhere from a very cheap screen like I have here monitoring my feed right now. It's about a $90 Dell used to screen because I don't need this to be very high quality. I just need it as a monitor for my shots as I'm setting them up and as I'm seeing what I'm actually recording here during this video versus something like a color accurate pro art screen, which is about 30 eight hundred dollars uh, which is the screen where i edit my videos highly color accurate very large color gamut range a bright and a screen with incredible resolution so it's a very sharp 4k screen so again you have a wide gamut of options but keep in mind that you will have to add those on to your pc build seems obvious but just want to point that out now the main thing to consider is going to be the performance for about the same price before you add the peripherals let's see what kind of performance you get going with the laptop versus the pc build now keep in mind that both of these devices both the tower and the laptop have i9 processors we have the i9 13900hx in in the Legion Pro 7i laptop, and we have the i9-13900KF inside of the tower. Now, on the Pro 7i, we have the RTX 4070 with 8 gigs of VRAM, and on the tower, we actually have the RTX 4080. I tried to get this review with the exact same GPUs, just mobile versus desktop, but unfortunately, Lenovo was not able to coordinate them just right, so I got as close as possible. Now, both of these laptops have 32 gigs of RAM, so those are the benchmarks that you're going to see reflected here on the charts. Now, first and foremost, going ahead and looking at the single core performance, you can see that these are just about neck and neck, only about 150 points difference from the desktop to the laptop. Now, as we get into multi-core performance for the Geekbench test, you can see that we're still neck and neck, only about 700 points difference between the laptop and and the desktop tower. Now, as we move on to Cinebench R23 single core performance, you can see they're still neck and neck. As we go on to multi-core performance for R23, that's where we get a bigger spread between these two devices. You can see a 27,000 versus a 37,000 on the tower, almost 10,000 points. What you're seeing is the ability for the part to be able to run at higher clock speeds for a longer period of time and do it consecutively across multiple applications. So one of the biggest benefits choosing very similar components, but basically laptop versus desktop is going to be the ability to do very, very strong multitasking. One of the applications a friend of mine over at Tech Notice, Lori mentioned recently, is he's able to send a video export to the media encoder inside of the Adobe Creative Suite and at the same time go back to Premiere Pro while his video is exporting in media encoder and begin to work on a new edit. And he sees no drop 
in the performance of the computer. So it's incredible to think you can be editing and exporting at the exact same time. Now, as we move on to some real world tests, let's take a look at Photoshop. Now you can see in Photoshop, we score a 1,376 for the tower and a 1,229 for the laptop. So very close in performance if you're gonna be using and each of these for Photoshop or InDesign, Illustrator, maybe using the Affinity Suite, so Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer, you're going to see great performance out of both of these devices. Now, as we move into After Effects, this is one area that we're going to see a bigger bump in performance. I'm going to say that this is mainly due to the RTX 4080. So if we had an RTX 4080 in this laptop, I'm guessing we would see at least 1150 to 1200 for this benchmark score. So this is where we're having a little discrepancy inside of the benchmarks because I could not get this laptop with the larger GPU. So forgive me for that. But this is where we're seeing some discrepancy because After Effects does enjoy a little bit more GPU performance and you're definitely going to get that out of the tower. As we move on to Blender Classroom, once again, you're going to see a huge leap in performance with the tower. Now, there's a few things going on here. When it comes to mobile versus desktop GPUs, they're completely different animals. Look at the size of this GPU, okay? This is a whole cooling and mechanism that exists just for the GPU. Whereas when you put a card, the actual GPU card inside of a laptop, you have much less area to cool that card. And so the performance highly varies between an entire desktop card that goes into a full tower system versus the card that goes into the laptop. So you're gonna have a lot more punch and performance out of an RTX 4070 in a tower than you would in a mobile device because they're actually slightly different parts. Now, we not only have a tower here housing a GPU, but we have a larger GPU, which is the RTX 4080. So if you're somebody who's serious about motion graphics or 3D modeling, you're gonna see in these next few tests that choosing a tower is the way to go for overall performance. All right, I hope this is making sense. If that little description of desktop versus mobile GPUs did not make sense, please let me know in the comment section below. I should probably make a full video on that moving forward in the future. All right, going into Autodesk 3DS Max, you can see here the Legion 7 Tower scores a 472 on the benchmark versus the 334 out of the Pro 7i. Still a great score out of the Pro 7i, and you would do well with this laptop for Autodesk 3DS Max. But if you are a serious 3D modeler needing as much performance as possible, the tower is going to be the way to go, especially for these graphical intensive programs. Now looking at Autodesk Maya, once again, a 730 versus the 339. It is an insane boost in performance. And it's not just the fact that it's in RTX 4080 versus the 4070 because it's a graphics processor inside of a tower. It's a completely different unit. It gives you a lot more headroom for the performance. Now moving on to PTC Creo, once again, huge difference, 546 versus a 245. Huge performance on that. And then SolidWorks, we see another big difference with a 177 versus the 118 on the laptop. So Blender Classroom, After Effects, and 3D modeling programs, definitely going to give the award to the tower. Now let's get into something where we see a little stronger competition between these two devices. Let's talk about video editing. For 4K video editing, you're honestly not going to see a big difference between these two devices. They're both going to have zero drop frames. They're both going to have solid export times out of the devices. As you can see, we score a 201 on the tower and a 217 on the laptop. Very minimal difference. Now, as we look at 6K, we're going to go back to those drop frame charts. And you can see that it has zero drop frames for both the laptop and the tower. So no issues with playback while you're editing your footage for 6K B-RAW and 6K RED footage. Now, as we go into the 6K export time, we're going to see an advantage out of the tower, but as you can see, it's less than a minute advantage going from the laptop to the desktop. And keep in mind, 4070 versus 4080. So as far as video editing is concerned, you can definitely get away with a laptop seeing very similar performance between these two devices. Like I said, the biggest difference is going to be that Blender, After Effects, and 3D modeling slash architecture use cases for the competition between tower and laptop. Now, as we go on to DaVinci Resolve, you can see that we have a bit of a spread 50 seconds between 
Nothing crazy. Again, video editing, it depends on your use case. What do you want to have? Do you want to be more on the go? You want to have a bit of a bump in performance by choosing the tower. But the real question that I have to ask you is how is your multitasking? Because as you saw for Cinebench R23 multi multitasking test, you can be exporting a video, rendering it out in media encoder and editing at the same time with my friend Lori's observation, zero dip in performance. And that's because of the incredible multitasking capability of these desktop CPUs from Intel. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the port differentiation. Obviously, you're gonna have a lot of port options for the tower. You're gonna have minimal port options and you're gonna not have any expansion. The great advantage of the tower is you're gonna have PCIe lanes. So if you look in here, this GPU is plugged into a PCIe lane 16. Okay, there's a quite a few PCIe lanes available. So one thing I'm gonna do for my new PC build that I'm finishing up right now is I'm adding four USB type C ports to my build because I find that I have a lot of drives I wanna plug in. And when using a dongle, trying to push that much information through a singular USB-C. So a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm having three, maybe four hard drives plugged into one USB-C lane and it gets really crowded. It starts to really slow down as I'm trying to transfer from drive to drive, transfer to my computer. And so it's really annoying. And so what I do is I add a PCIe lane USB type C port card to my tower. And this gives me a lot of freedom to expand this. Two main things I'll be adding to my PC build are a capture card from Blackmagic for 4K inputs. That's actually what you're seeing captured right here right now is through a PCIe lane capture card and I'll be adding the USB-C port. So the expandability of a tower is far, far more advantageous for somebody who has kind of unique use cases for their workflow. For a laptop, you're stuck with what they give you and it's great performance. It's a great opportunity with this Pro 7i, but you are stuck with the options that they provide to you. The tower is far more customizable. Now, which one should you pick? Now, if you're somebody like me, the tower makes sense for your day-to-day -day workflow. I'm capturing multiple cameras at once. I'm plugging in multiple drives. I'm trying to set up footage for my video editor to edit. I have four monitors hooked up to my system for my specific workflow. I have a display that I'm monitoring this current recording. I have two vertical monitors and I have a horizontal monitor. And this all is made possible by the expansiveness of the GPU, the motherboard, and the capture card. And I'll soon be adding, like I said, that USB type C PCIe card to allow more expansion for more ports for USB type C. So that workflow really works well for me. However, when I'm on the go, it obviously makes sense to use the laptop. So if you're somebody who's maybe a student or you're a professional who's often on the go a lot, or you own your own business, the laptop might make more sense because it's kind of the do it all for you dolly rather than a build that you have to keep at your shop and then you got to buy another laptop to go on the go. And so maybe it makes more sense to do a laptop. However, if you're somebody who has really unique use cases, the tower makes a whole lot of sense. Comment below and let me know what your use cases are and how you plan to use a tower or a laptop. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and I'll see you guys here in the next video.